Oh, Why did weird. You twice. <laughs> well, it's okay. Who, who has shares a similar frustration that when you go to, I feel like it's certain gas stations and you have to say yes three times to, yes, I really want to make this purchase. Oh, yes. yes. Have, Are you okay. sure? Yeah. <laughs> Final <laughs> answer. Yay, there's Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Hey, guys. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. When did you, right. What? You're in a studio? What? <laughs> yeah, dude. It just came in like a week ago. Dude, that's oh, crazy. it looks amazing. Bro, can I brag on this for a second? Absolutely. Oh Do okay, it. so this is a Studio Bricks Pro, and it's triple walled, and it's four by five. It is almost 2,000 pounds. Oh, wow. It's legit. Yikes. Yeah, like I'm really proud of it. It's, I love it. It's my baby, my very it's expensive huge. baby. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, That's Morgan great. was telling me about it last night and I was like, well, aren't those things tiny? Like, you know, my friend has one and it looked like a coffin when I went over to her place before. And, but Morgan got the big fancy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. no, that's amazing. What Do they come in different colors? Did you? You can, but that's like an extra thousand bucks. And I was like, nah, I'll just keep mine. You know? What? Yeah. Just paint it yourself. Put stickers right? all over it. <laughs> I know. I paid so much extra to have my booth pink. <laughs> oh my As God, you I remember, should. I, I remember assembling this. that. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> was it a pain to put together? Yeah, I just like um, when I moved, I just ended up like paying a guy from Vocal Booth to like. Uh, before it took like eight hours with um, a bunch of my friends and then like the next day more people had to come over and it was like even more time and it was just not like an easy thing. Oh, yeah. So I just like hired a guy who could handle doing all of it. We got okay. paid in stuffed crust pizza, if I recall. Yummy. I know. I was like, I'm getting pizza for Is everyone. Is that or Costco? I forgot. That works. <laughs> I think it was Costco pizza. Oh, you might be right, yeah. Either way, Costco uh, pizza is really good. It, it is. is. Yeah. And it makes me sad I can't get it anymore without being a member. Like they closed it what off so you can't get the that? cheap pizza. Yeah. I think they're losing money on it because everyone's like, I want to go get the cheap pizza. And so now they're like, no, members only. And I was That's sad. Fine. Or is it that they realized it was such a hot item? They're like, we can drive membership if we put the pizza back. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, wow. they, like, they denied down. me and I was very sad. <laughs> up down $60 like, a, a year for, for, for pizza. pizza. Right. Oh, I'd pay it. Those hot dogs are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I love Costco hot dogs. It's so, so cheap. And the little too. onion yeah. turny thing that you oh, do. Yeah. I'm obsessed I want with the chicken. I installed in my kitchen. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, that's what we're going to have to get you for Christmas. Yes. Oh my gosh. I just want the onion cranker <gasps> thing. Onions? <laughs> I, love, I love onions. I love onions. I love onions. I love onions. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like I could just eat like oh my gosh. Okay, so grilled onions. Thing, uh Brandon made a, you know, a turkey and he he Ooh. put a, like half a like a whole onion. He cut it in half and put it like in the brine, you know, right. to soak up all yeah. the yeah, yeah. And then I I was like, "Can I have that?" And he's like, "Sure, you weirdo." <laughs> so, <laughs> you just ate the onion. I did. Yeah, I didn't did you do that with my onion. turkey too? Yeah, yeah. And it was just like I don't know, but that onion like soaked up all the all the the broth and just and it was so good. It was just so good. Oh I just gosh. took a bite out of that whole onion and just I ate the entire thing. It was so good. <laughs> notes for Christmas presents. Morgan's getting onions. just an onion. Yeah, onions for everyone. Yeah. Is there an onion of the month? Can I send you like a different onion every month, Morgan? There should be. Yes. Hey, I don't you make a comment by putting in loot box. <laughs> and I don't. You know me, Brad. You know I'm not good in the kitchen. We have discussed this. <laughs> I've, I've, I've witnessed it. I mean. Yes. Oh! <laughs> I've, I've, oh no! That's fire. Okay. Yeah, I've, he he ain't wrong. Like I, Alan is really good with food too. Like he makes the best <laughs> soup. And really? I tried to help in the kitchen. I tried. I'm not good. So, Me we neither. It's okay. <laughs> no, Me you're and great. Kira, I, we, we'll stick messing. together. We'll. You know, we do all I'll, I'll feed all of you. That's fine. It's just, it'll, yeah, you know what I, mean, so. I can make great coffee drinks. Oh, yes. Yeah. Good, great egg coffee. I, I'm yes. good with that. I can make dessert. 
Somebody get me an espresso machine and I can do it. Are we going to have a tea party? <gasps> That's oh how, like, where this is going. We got the desserts, Ooh. the coffee. Maybe Ooh. Alan makes soup. I love soup. I love soup onions. Coffee. I love <laughs> soup and I love onions. Like, yeah. I love how we're five minutes into this conversation and like we're like, oh yeah, we have a panel to do. <laughs> oh yeah. We're just talking about food. I just want I'm food. Hungry. That's that's all I'm talking about. It's so very on brand for Motoha, I feel though. Yes. 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 Oh. On brand. Oh, gosh, am I being my own character? But I'm like, all right, guys, let's. let's all right, kids, let's. <laughs> yeah. Kids. Then Toe and I would just like run away and leave you to your own devices, and you'd be like, "That's not fair." <laughs> right? I'll just cry in the corner, like, like I go to take a a, a bathroom break, and then I come back, and everyone's gone. Right. <laughs> yeah. See, that's like, that's yeah. when you know you're typecast, Alan, and you're like, "Oh shoot." Yep. Yeah. I have to deal with naked. No, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what what panel did, did I come to? <laughs> So for anyone, anyone that has this is a free like, panel. <laughs> yes, okay. this is a free panel. So we we talk about food. That's what. Yeah. You get. Yes. Yeah. I mean, most uh, they're either uh, Star Wars or food are most of the free panels. Um, so for everyone who's never joined us before, this is uh, our our first our public panel. This is where I get to catch up. It's where I get to ask questions. It's where we get to find everybody's backstory. Um, in a lot of cases, I haven't seen people in a while. I think the last time I saw Morgan, she was in a kitchen facing off against me in a food war. Um, I so love it's you. okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, you knew I would. I knew I would. I, <laughs> I stink in the kitchen. I knew I would fail oh. at that competition. I knew it. I feel like though that for knowing that you were you were gonna lose, like you really went all out on the dish. Though oh. it's not like you didn't like downgrade. Okay, it's because I have a roommate that w who gave me suggestions. Oh. I mean, sure, I, wow. I don't think I would love to do that. But Cheater. <laughs> I, needed I needed help. Okay, I was like, ah, Brandon, help. And he's like, well, how about this and that? And I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. So we, we don't take any questions during the free panel. Uh, the VIP afterwards, I'm going to shut up. And it'll all just be question after question coming from you. If any of you that have bought VIP tickets are not in the, the Facebook group, right now on the other side of the wall is Rachel and Autumn, and they will get you, make sure that you're in the VIP Facebook group. To find that, just go to uh, Color World Live VIP only, and then request access, and then they'll check your ticket. Um, there is still time. If you want to be in the VIP, grab a hangout, grab an autograph, grab a personalized message and then we'll see you in the vip okay so alan i yeah. i don't know your backstory you don't i don't know your backstory <laughs> the lore how, you want the lore of i want all of it how did you end up with the microphone in front of you um fear <laughs> <laughs> i i uh when i was a kid uh my my older brother rented from blockbuster office space have you seen that movie yeah. Yes, where they yeah. song and the printer hits, and they're like, yeah, 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 red stapler, everything. Yeah, no, I watched that, and it scared the crap out of me as a kid. <laughs> What? Um, because because no no because it's about you know it's like a satire it's like a dark comedy on yeah. on like office is, culture yeah, right yeah. and like and and all this and like office life and all that sort of stuff and. Uh, my brother was going to like a dead end job at the time, and I was like, "Oh my god, it's real!" And like, <laughs> and so it scared me enough to be like, "Okay, I have to figure out what I want to do in life." That is, and so working. for like the next like ten years or whatever, I don't even know how long. Um, but for for however long it took, um, I was like, "Okay, I got to figure out what I want to do." So I like bounced around between things. I got this like I'm just this little kid like trying to figure out what he wants in life. I mean, it's Aww. it's not going it's not going well for like a few years. But uh, that being said, uh, my cousin who's an editor in Hollywood was like, well, what's like the common thread amongst it all? And I realized it just went back to my childhood of like watching a bunch of TV and, and vi playing video games. And, um, and I was like, okay, well, what's the most fun you had as a kid? Oh, well, playing pretend. Everyone played pretend when they were a kid. So I was like, what if I did that for a living? And I was like, okay, what about voice acting? So I found a, uh, I found a voiceover conservatory in the big city where I'm at. I'm, I was in the Bay Area, so I went to San Francisco. 
uh, I took a class and the first time I stepped in front of a mic, I realized, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. Really? Like literally the first time? Mm hmm. Yep. I was like, okay, this is it. And, uh, and then I started training for a commercial. I joined the voice acting Alliance. Uh, <laughs> Um, and yeah, no, and then set off on my journey and then, you know, went to school and, uh, and then when I got out of school, I got in with Bang Zoom and then my first audition was for like this dorky kid with a gun, um, you know, and I was like, he's such a try hard. And then I booked him and it was a show called Gargantia. Um, yeah, good times. And so that like, I didn't expect that. And then from there, I just kept working uh eventually 2015 to 2017 went back home to help with like finances for the family got a job at stanford and then my mom remarried so i didn't have to worry about that anymore so i came back and then since then i've been working and so any musical theater or improv in your past uh you know what's weird is that like i've always done some sort of performance even as a kid like i think the earliest was like community theater in f first or second grade i can't remember it's too it's too long ago um but uh yeah i've always had an element of performance in my life and the thing is like i never knew to like put two and two together being like oh this is what i love doing yep. i just did it just because it was fun and yeah. you know it was easy um as a kid you know because you have no like you have no inhibitions as a kid and um yeah, I, I, I did. I was part of the improv team in high school. I did improv in college. I did clowning um, before what? I got into college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I did, uh, you know, like I did student student films. Did uh, I actually created a uh, um, a loop group for my junior college uh, before, and then we did a few films for like for like student films, and we did like a fully fully set and all that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, like singing, no, I, I sing in the shower and that's about it. That's, no. All that's right. as far as I can. Kiara, speaking of singing in the shower, uh, you, <laughs> I love <laughs> What? Well, in, in one of her hangouts, somebody asked her about singing and she was like, ah, no, when no one's looking, sure. Absolutely. But I don't sing on camera. I don't sing in, um, so that's, yeah. Sorry. You had to know that to know why that was a segue. Uh, but Kira, I love your backstory. Like you're president of the anime club you are a gamer like how did you go from what was that step like to you to just really be a huge fan and then make it like you're so knowledgeable like anytime someone comes near like the things that are important to you you're like you know them inside and out how did you how did you move from president of the anime club to you know booking anime roles it was a long and arduous journey, not going to lie. That's um, one of the reasons that I tell people I mentor that it's so important to have patience because a lot of people decide they want to do this and they're like, okay, so how can I start auditioning for anime roles? And, you know, very rarely does that happen to anyone. I'm pretty sure that all of us in this call here right now would tell you, you know, we we took like acting classes. We did all this stuff. You know, like I know Morgan, for example, has been acting her entire life. And so it's very like, you know, it's a long hard journey from like, um, you know, getting acting training and like getting your demos done and just doing all the different things that you have to do. And moving to LA, I think was like a huge step. I know for me and probably for everybody else here, because now things are a little different with the pandemic. We're all kind of working from home and stuff, but you know, that's, that's like a new thing because it was always like you have to be where the work is you have to be in either dallas or la if you want to be an anime that's just kind of how it is so um although it is it is nice with yashihime to see some of the vancouver cast coming back because i know that used to be kind of a place for anime not so much um anime dubbing done there anymore but yeah so i think um you know just kind of like moving to la is the big thing and um, I've worked in so many different jobs. Um, actually I used to work for a place called kitten rescue. That's like a kitten nursery. And, um, so I don't know if you guys saw it, but if you buy like, um, autographs or hangouts with me or anything like that, I'll be donating half the proceeds to kitten rescue. That's badass. I love That's it. Awesome. Okay. Jackie, I don't know your backstory. I, we, we all stand you over here now that uh, <laughs> your, your like run through was the longest 15 minutes. 
uh, <laughs> it was, it was turned so into good. a thing. We just we couldn't say goodbye. Like none of us was willing to say goodbye, and uh, it, it was a real pleasure. How, how did you get started? How did you like? There's so much history on the wall behind you. You write anime as uh, no stranger in your life. How did you get started? No, I have. I am lifelong anime fan. I have always been involved in some way with anime also president of anime club and founder and got manga in the school library and I love, love it. But I never thought that I was actually going to be doing it as a career. I went like very responsible, like, no, I have to, I was going like psychology route. So I went to college yep. and was fully planning on having a big girl job. And, um, very shortly into it, after I got my degree, I was just like, I need a creative outlet. I need okay. to be doing something else. This is stifling. Um, so moved to California, um, still doing acting. I've always acted and sung and I did the musical theater route my entire life, um, but then came out here and kind of dabbled in film and didn't really like the industry very much. I know I didn't, I'm, I'm a very animated person and that is not great for on film. Um, but one of my friends was like taking a, a voiceover workshop and she's just like, you know, you love anime. Why don't you try this? And I was just like, all right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And just like Alan, like the first moment I stepped into that booth, I was like, oh, oh no, no, I'm never doing anything else again. This is fantastic. I love this. Um, so I, looked and like bang zoom happened to be having open auditions at a convention like in a next couple months so like i just started you know every day in my booth start trying to like figure wrap my head around this and then went and auditioned and ended up getting in with them and getting on their roster and That's starting awesome. anime yeah i hear it's it's one of the most recommended things that I hear from actors is to take classes and take them from yes. Bang Zoom. And that yes. they're one of the studios that prides themselves on like finding talent. Um, oh yeah, they're amazing at giving, you know, people who are kind of new to the industry, like their foot in their door. They're, they're great at that. I really appreciate that so much. All right, Morgan, tell, okay. tell us your backstory. Okay, cool. Well, it all started when I joined a religious cult. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not even joking. <laughs> okay. It's a long story, let me get into this. Okay, so I have always loved the performing arts. Always. Yeah. I've always been naturally animated. It's just my thing. And I was involved in theater, the theater department at my school. And outside of that, I was a part of a performing arts company, which ended up being quite a religious cult. And I didn't know it at the time, but it was just, you know, you know how that can be. <laughs> so, right. so yeah, no, I, I grew up in the performing arts. Um, I could sing, I could dance, I could act. I learned all of that and I just did it consistently. I, gosh, I was a, I was the lead singer of an all girl band and we, yes. yes. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you the name of it though. <laughs> I don't, I honestly, I don't want to give them any attention because it was, the band was a part of that stupid cult. And I'm just like, Oh, that's in the past. I just want to forget it. But, but it is a part of my origin story, which is why I do mention it. Cause it's a huge part of, you know, where it came from. I'm yeah. But yeah. So that's where it started. Well, where did I go to from there? Um, so there's a lot of different details, but I guess to wrap it all up, basically, I left that company and then I competed in a voiceover contest. It was a, okay. a competition that was held by Todd Habercorn and it was at a convention. And the prize, if you won that competition, was an audition at Funimation. Dude. Yes. Now, here's the thing, though. I had only ever done on stage and a little bit of on camera. I had never done voiceover before. Okay. And, but hey, when you're an actor, it, you know, it, the you just, skills translate yeah. to voiceover. There's of course yeah. different aspects of voiceover that make it different from on stage and on camera, but it's still basically the same elements. You have to be an actor. 
And so I, I had just quit my job, basically. I was like in the process of leaving and I was like, all right, all right, Lord, you know, what do you got for me this time? Like, let's yeah. see what happens. Like if I, okay, I'll take it as a sign. If I win this competition, I'll take it okay. as a sign that that's what the Lord wants for me, right? Okay. And I won, <laughs> I won the competition and that's how I got my first audition at Funimation. And from there on out, they kept sending me auditions. Cause here's the thing, you don't book everything you audition for. Sometimes you can send out- Sure don't. A <laughs> hundred auditions and maybe only book one. Yeah. And yeah. that's not always enough to pay the bills. So, <laughs> but I got, um, you know, I was blessed with, um, the ability to win that competition. And then I, I started booking those auditions I got from Funimation and here I am now. I've been furiously trying to find out if you were ever in Barlow Girl, uh, <laughs> like the lead singer. I, I love them so much. I, know, I love I'm Barlow Girl. <laughs> yes, it's so I know, good. I know what you're talking about though, I do. Cause good stuff, good stuff. Okay, good. That, then I can still music. like that. I, I was like, please tell me that wasn't it. So then I can still no. like that. Okay, I, I promise you, the band that I was in, you've probably never heard of it. And, okay. I hope that, and I hope that no one in the chat that does know what it is, I hope that <laughs> none of them say what it is. Because I just, I don't want to bring any attention to it. Because like, well, we did have music videos that aired on, on a certain religious okay, uh, okay. like television channel. Yeah. I don't know if anyone out there even remembers. Well, I am very good at searching and I can't <laughs> find the connection. So I think you're safe. Oh, thank God. Like I looked and looked and yeah. So then I just. <laughs> it's a part of my past that I just rather leave there, you know? Do it. Let's do it. Uh, okay. Fantastic. Who, who watched Yashihime like earlier in your life? For, for any of you, were you a big fan, Alan? Uh, you mean, you mean any Yasha? Duh, yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I meant. And if I was paying attention to what came out of my mouth, I would have said that. Uh, yeah, you know what's funny is that uh, I, I watched it on Adult Swim. Um, really? Yeah, I watched it on Adult Swim back in 2002, 2003. So uh, this, is a, this is a story that I tell, but like um, when I was a kid, like I would... Because it was coming out like 11 p.m. Uh -huh. on Saturdays. You stay up super late. And I would stay, yeah, and stay up super late, right? There's like six shows, it was like three hours. And uh, what I would do is I would convince my family to go sleep at 1030 to wake up really early for church. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would Genius sneak out at, at 1055 and, and go like put the audio to like the lowest setting possible. Yeah. Uh, and watch Adult Swim. And the first show that came on was Inuyasha. And uh, so I watched it. Uh, and I watched it pretty, I, I, I got away with that for like a year and a half. Um, and I, it's funny because like, I, when I was a kid, I was like the closest character, the character, like my favorite character is Songo, uh, in, in, in the show. But like the character that I, um, that I related with most was Kohaku because he was around my age. So like, and this is like an unironic story, but like, you know, like some 18 years later, yeah. The audition for Kohaku comes out, and I'm like, I got this! Like, oh my god. And so, and then I booked it. So, yeah. It's, no, I watched it. That's, okay, so was it on Adult Swim just because it was anime? And back then they are like, oh, nobody wants to watch this. We'll put it on at 11 p.m. Like, no. no. Just because it was older. Right. It was, because yeah. it was like, it was like a TV 14 older. block. Yeah. Yeah. Because we so, had like, like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball on normal hours. Right, right, yeah, but but you know, like, and this might reveal my not re really reveal my age, but like, I was definitely not fourteen and and not allowed to watch this stuff um, as it was airing. Like, it was that it was Cowboy Bebop, it was like you uh, you hawk the show and uh, and like like the old like the the older grittier Gundams and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, it was just a block of anime on TV, and um, like. I yeah, I just loved it and 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 stayed tuned and uh, got the DVDs. I think I have all, I have all eight, like seven or eight like okay. lo uh, box sets of of Vinyasha. So right, Morgan, I I have been surprised at that there's cussing in Yashihime. Was there? Is that what landed in Yasha in the Adult Swim block, or is that new to this? Possible. Person? I mean, it's possible. Like, I mean. 
He knew Yasha kind of said words that were. Yeah, they were bad. That were yeah, no, they, they were bad. They had yeah. a damn well, once in a while. He said damn. Yeah. He said, yeah, he did. So I don't know. It's possible. Were you, were you surprised? Uh, like, how, how much do you get to be yourself? Um, who who wrote Yasha Hime? Who, who did the, the adapting? Uh, that would Laura be Stahl. Laura Stahl. Yeah. yeah. Laura. Um, I, I love your character so much, Morgan. I, I just, I, I, if there was ever a spinoff, I would watch every second. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> I love Moroha so much. <laughs> it's so much fun. She is unabashedly honest, which I just, I love loud, obnoxious women that tell the truth. That's my like thing. Same, yeah. same. Yeah. I love that. Yes. <laughs> um, did you audition specifically for her or did they call you in for her? Like, did you audition for, for more than one character? Tell me about. I literally only got to audition for Moraha. I okay. Were, yeah, I wasn't, I, they did not send me the sides for any of the other characters to audition for. Just Moraha. And so I was just like, I don't know, because normally I do voice for characters that are more on the Toa Setsuna side. Okay. So I was kind of surprised when I was not given the given the option to read for either of them. But I don't know. I think it's because it they out. knew they wanted her as Moroha. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I'm glad that it worked out in the end. <laughs> do you, now, do you feel like you get to be more of yours? Like how, how much acting, it, she just feels so free and so just like ready to be alive. Uh, what, what's your relationship with her as a character? She, I love how quirky she is. She's very animated, very quirky, very yeah. fun, very energetic. And I feel like, oh gosh, I love characters like that. Like I get to play around with the musicality of the lines. Like, I don't know. I feel like out of all the characters I voiced for, she's one of the most um, fun I've had in the booth. Yeah because because of that there's just there's so many options with the reads because she's just everywhere i i don't know it's hard for me to explain i'm not good with words that's why other people write them for me uh, <laughs> really yeah. good job when they're on on the screen in front of you uh yeah. Jackie, what uh were you staying up with alan late at night watching inuyasha Yes, I was. Uh, actually, Inuyasha was my first anime crush. Really? Um, yes. Aww. I was in love what? with him. Okay. Um, so I, I'm very happy to be a part of this. <laughs> yes, I, I loved it. I wanted to be Kagome so bad. But yeah, no, I I also, my, my parents knew to just let me just let me watch it just yeah i'm i'm gonna watch the anime i'm gonna watch all the anime and nothing's gonna stop me what is, what what really drew you to inuyasha like what did you like what what drew you to the show and then like inuyasha in particular like what made you really like inuyasha the very first time i watched it i thought it was sailor moon because she had the same outfit like she i was just like <laughs> Wait, but isn't isn't she this? I was a little kid, guys. I was oh, little. Okay. <laughs> um, You're but, so You're so uh, I don't know if that was, I'm showing my age there, but yeah, I was small enough to not realize that they were two different shows. Um, but very quickly, I caught on that it was very different. Um, and then, yes, yes. Right? I, I love him. I love it, him. Well, but look at her outfit. You're so. It's the schoolgirl. I was just like, I was just like, but that's, that's Sailor Jupiter's outfit. I don't, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. You have every right in the world to be confused by that. And I think, I think I was watching it at a, at a hotel and it wasn't even in English. It was like in, in Spanish or something. So I also couldn't understand what pretty anime. I'm just going to watch this. Um, but then. I, I very quickly fell in love with the protagonist and had to watch it every single Saturday afterwards. So then did you, were you aware then when, when the rumbling started to happen that there was going to be a sequel to Inuyasha? Did you? Very, like right before 
Like it, I, I saw that the announcement was coming out that they were going to make it, and I absolutely lost it. Um, especially when I saw that it was like, oh my gosh, it's the daughters, they're growing up, they have children. So Shobaru has children. What? Um, I was very mm. excited, very excited, and and I didn't actually think that I was even going to get a chance to audition for it. Um, so I was very happy to just Fantastic. Get the chance. Kira, did you did you get to read for more than one character? Did they peg you right off the bat? What was your audition like for Inu or for Yashihime? Um, I was sent both Toa and Setsuna. Okay. Um, and I remember like not really I was worried because I didn't feel like I was a really good fit for either of them. And I was like, well, maybe like I can be a side character down the line or, or something like that. And I almost like didn't read because I would just like, oh, I'm not, you know, I was like getting in my head and just feeling like I, I wouldn't be a good choice and so on and so forth. But like always audition anyway, because you never know. Yes. Um, so I got a call back for both of them. And I, I was like, very surprised. I remember when I was cast as Setsuno, just because I feel like um, I don't really book that archetype a lot. I, I am starting to book it more now, but you know, I was just like, I was really worried, like, oh my gosh, can I handle this? Because um, yeah, I also was really obsessed with Inuyasha when I was younger, and K Kagome was my first cosplay. <laughs> um, if like a picture somewhere from like 2005 Halloween, and yeah. Um, I don't know, it was one of the things that helped inspire me to want to be a voice actor for anime. So it was really, really special to me. Like I, you know, never would have expected that I would get a chance to read for it, even when I saw news about it on social media and stuff like that. Cause I was like, oh, they're gonna do it in Canada. Like they did the original show, you know? So, but that was kind of like the best of both worlds. Cause we got both. That is fantastic. What, what did you, what really spoke to you when you first found out about Inuyasha, like, when you were watching it when you were younger, what, what really jumped out to you? Um, well, one of the things, because Jackie said it first, so I'm like, <laughs> okay, Inuyasha was hot, not gonna lie. <laughs> I will be the first to say it. Yes. No shame. <laughs> it, it was kind of like the same thing. It's like, Inuyasha's hot and I wanna be Kagome. And yeah. I was oh. so inspired by her original voice actress, Monica Story. She um, sadly has retired since then, but she was like, I was just like, I want to be her. I want to have a voice like that. And of course, like my voice didn't sound cool like that. So I would try to like train myself to to be able to speak like her and stuff. And I I almost like kind of credit that for um kind of like being able to do like anime high school girl voices pretty well because that's not what I sound like normally. But I can like go into it without even thinking. So there we go. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm desperately trying to find that cosplay picture. <laughs> um. Yeah, it would be like, um, it wouldn't be online. I would have to like find it in like old computer archives. <laughs> um, all right. I, I I found quite a few. It is easy to find you in cosplay. Was that, yeah, um, yeah. Did, have you have you always done that? Has that always been part of your anime experience is cosplay? Yeah, for sure. I haven't cosplayed Setsuna because you know, like pandemic and everything, it's like there's no cons, but maybe someday. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I like her hair. I think that. That would be kind of fun. Anyone else a cosplayer? Yeah? <laughs> what, what came first? You, I mean, I guess you would have, I don't know, you tell me, how did you get into cosplay? Because I wanted to be Sailor Moon. Uh, and yeah, I my first costume I ever made was Sailor V. Not Venus, Sailor V. And that was like, oh God, how old was I? I must have been like nine, maybe, maybe even younger. And the rest is history. I've just been cosplaying ever since. I love it. Okay. How, so you had a bunch of access to Sailor Moon and then fell in love and wanted to be a magical girl. And so, yeah, yeah? Okay. yeah pretty much. Um, do you, Morgan, do you do any, any cosplay? I've only ever cosplayed once. What's that? that was as a gender bent Kaneki from Tokyo Ghoul. Ooh. 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 <laughs> yeah, but um, it, it was just really expensive, so I stopped. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is expensive, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. what am You'd I think making your own would be like less, but no, it, it costs. Right. Hey, does anyone have sewing skills on the panel? Yeah. I tried to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I made a few costumes, but it was just like, yeah, it's so expensive to like, 
get the fabric and then like if I messed it up then that would be like more fabric wasted and yep. so mm. now pretty much I will only because it I couldn't get it to look as good as like a lot of the you know you can get like pretty high quality bought costumes online now so mm. pretty much I would only make my own costume if it was something that I couldn't like easily get a good pre-made version of. Jackie, how, how surprised were you to learn that it is actually more expensive to make your own clothes than it is to buy them? I was angry. I was so angry. I, you know, especially like, I'm not great at sewing, so I mess up a lot. Um, and ha buying fabric is just so <laughs> ridiculously expensive. It makes zero sense. Yeah. Um, the, the world of fast fashion that we live in you like it, it makes sense right like if i make it myself yeah. then I, and can... I really like i like cosplay inspired outfits than like oh. true cosplay yeah. so right. i like to take the concept of the character and kind of put a little spin on it so and i can't find costumes like that so i gotta make them well, okay. I love just doing like, um, cause the wigs and makeup are my favorite part. So sometimes I will do that. And then like a, <coughs> sorry, um, what the character would wear if they were doing like, um, casual clothes. That's, that's a great idea. I like yeah. that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's like, if I were to get into cosplay, I would probably be like, yeah, I'd like something that I could do casually so I could also potentially wear that around and yes. no exactly. one no one thinks you can i'm a wear it job. after the con you right? don't have to just wear the clothes for yeah. the convention i mean right. otherwise it can get really uncomfortable too especially the shoes like my two b boots nearly killed me <laughs> oh, oh i can imagine yeah okay morgan you you mentioned gender bent my favorite i was thankful uh like i said searching is my thing uh and i was hoping that i could find these this is a group of cosplayers, Salt Lake Comic Con. I don't even know how many years ago that was. And they did, they all dressed up as gender bent X Men, right? So like he that. is Emma White, she's Colossus, he's Phoenix, right? It they it's so freaking cool. These are some of my favorite um, people that I've <laughs> ever taken a picture of. And I guess they really uh, made quite a splash. There's some some more a gender oh. bent. Gambit, yeah. Look at that storm, dude. So cool. Look at that storm. That dude, yeah. I I have seen that. I don't know if anyone has seen that guy. We used to do a hundred shows a year in thirty-eight states. So um, this wow. guy is epic. For his wow. cape is fantastic. Right. So that, is, awesome. that is an amazing cape. Whoa. So I gender bent cosplay to me is some of the coolest. Like most, it, it's like um, does anyone eat vegetarian or vegan? Used to be. Yeah, I used to be. <laughs> well, I, I feel like the food frontier, like where new things are happening, is in vegetables. Yeah. Right. Right. For, we, we're all taught like vegetables are gross and, and kids don't eat vegetables. And then those kids like grew up and they're like, but I, I, could, eat vegetables. I could eat all of these things if they just didn't taste terrible. And so <laughs> it started. They're like, definitely getting more creative. Right? Okay. Yes. Who, is, who likes the buffalo cauliflower? I've never had it. Never had it. What? Okay, Morgan. You you can cook for them. You can make buffalo cauliflower. Haven't we already decided that she's not great oh, in I, the kitchen? I believe in Morgan. <laughs> exactly I believe what Jackie said. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous. Maybe not. <laughs> I'd try it. Yo, I mean. You cannot trust me in the kitchen. Uh, I'm, right. He's going to give us food poisoning off of cauliflower so, somehow. All right. yeah. <laughs> Have you seen how Moroha, like, struggled with pancakes that, okay. that is, that is with anything wasn't that just because you can't actually eat three pancakes and breathe okay no she had trouble both like making it and eating it because she just, <laughs> yeah she tried it didn't work out when i she saw tries her best yeah exactly <laughs> not even in anime can you eat three pancakes and breathe there's just it's too much carb like it's not even I, has anyone ever eaten so much peanut butter that you can't breathe? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's oh, totally yeah. a thing. You can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Alan, what what is your favorite dish? You you're a, you said you love favorite eating. dish. What do you when when people are like, oh, who's gonna cook dinner tonight? And you're like, you slide across the room and you're like, I'll take care of dinner. <laughs> what do you cook? 
Um, I'm, uh, steak. Oh, really? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm like a huge steak aficionado right now, and like I, uh, I mean, my girlfriend got me a sous vide machine, uh, and like you know, like I've been trying out like different cuts of steak, like porterhouse, and I'm like yeah. What's your favorite cut? Uh, ribeye. Ribeye, okay. uh, usually, yeah, usually ribeye. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting into the filet mignons yes! and like. Okay. Sorry. Yes. I love and, filet mignons. And, Sorry. And it's the, just my uh, favorite. It's amazing. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll talk <laughs> after. Uh, no, but like uh, the Chateaubriand, uh, I'll probably if I can get a good cut of that, I'll, I, I'd, I'd pick that. But okay. um, yeah, no steak with like you know like the sides of salad, you know like cream of spinach or like cream spinach and and probably some hash browns or like maybe some onions. Yes, with some onions. <laughs> with your onions. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I'll make a soup. <laughs> yes, yeah. please. Oh, yeah. I love you. I, I'm apparently going to be cooking for everyone here, like steak and... And French yeah. onion. You need to do steak and French onion Oh, yes. French onion soup. Yeah, no, I'll do it. Okay. I've done it. I'm excited for the future, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have hope. This is why we keep waking up tomorrow. One day, we're going to have... Yep, ribeye and steak but, from Alan. From Alan. <laughs> well, okay, how do you cook it, Alan? How do you cook the steak? Oh, I mean, so so the two ways I like cooking steak is uh, sous viding it, and then finishing it off on the pan with like you know like butter basting it, um, or I'll reverse sear it. So I'll put it in the oven for like I love butter. like like an hour, <laughs> and then I'll finish it off on on like a cast iron. Uh, with bu with with butter, garlic, and uh, thyme or rosemary. Okay. Mm. okay. My heart. Right. Are you are you? Well, how do you how do you have your how do you eat your steak? Uh, I actually cut it on the board first. I cut it like like once it's rested, I cut it on the board and then I serve that. And then so like you just use a fork. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. No, that's like I think it's like the classic way of having. It. I'm 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 uh, I, I've been reading a book about like the Japanese and Korean ways of 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 preparing steak why well, yeah. i can't believe i'm talking about steak right now but yeah no it's uh oh it's happening oh yeah no no like it's it's interesting like i've uh, been contacting my mom for like the, her kalbi recipe for like her korean barbecue recipe and marinade and um yeah we'll see how that goes because like that's korean barbecue is another thing that i just love doing as well i mean kira kira actually all three of you know because <laughs> uh, uh yeah of uh, enjoying Korean barbecue together, yeah. Okay, Kira, what's your what's your favorite thing that comes out of the kitchen? Um, that I make because I can only make pretty limited things or to eat. So give me both. What is your favorite thing that comes off of out of your kitchen personally, and then what's your favorite thing that makes it to the dinner table? Um, well, for me, I've been doing these like um, box subscriptions where they send you something new to make mm -hmm. every week. So like, yeah. I've been trying to get more comfortable with cooking by like, um, you know, they give you like all the ingredients and everything's measured out and they show you how to make it. So that's been really helpful. Um, but in terms of like favorite food, sushi burrito. Yo. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Rachel sure. had that for the first time at Anime Expo like 2018. And then that, that was all she would talk about. Was <laughs> sushi I know I make everybody have it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no. Yo, Jogosaki. That, that I signed up for. Um, through you, the food service. I, I, yeah. I, like, I thought to myself, hey, that'll help me um, get the hang of cooking and stuff. No, nope. I just <laughs> make Brandon do it. <laughs> right. It feeds two people. And so I'm just like, I pay for it. And I'm like, hey, if you make this, you can have the other part of it. And it's like, if great. Make... And so <laughs> no, it makes all of it. And I just, I eat it. You're so <laughs> funny, Morgan. Morgan, you're my favorite. Okay, Jackie, what about you? What's your favorite thing that comes out of your kitchen and what's your favorite thing that shows up on your dinner table? I love making fried chicken. Oh, really? Um, I think I've got it like down, down? like a science. Okay. It's, it's yeah, I, and it's, yeah, no, I love it. It's so hard to find good fried chicken out here. Yes. I'm from Georgia. I need Southern Yep. crispy fried chicken and it's so hard to find so i just make it myself okay so what do you put on the chicken what's your binder um honestly i just use uh i don't know what a binder is um okay, so what what takes your your breading your 
and then uh, adheres it to your chicken. Right. It's usually like an egg wash. Egg. Like, yes. Yeah. I do. I do flour, egg, flour, egg, flour. I do, okay. I do it a bunch of times. Lots of layers. Flour, um, egg. So you will go ahead in the same in the same one. Like you'll flour it, then egg it, and then, then back to the original flour. It's it's usually a mix of uh, flour and cornstarch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, to get it super crispy, and then I put like just basic seasonings in the first I'm one. Taking notes on the side, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I just do like basic salt, pepper, um, maybe some garlic salt in the first one, and then the last flour is where I put like the the Creole spices or the Cajun spices and the the paprika and all that make it nice and spicy. Okay. Yeah, so, so are you? Is this like in a row? Are you like? You go down the line. Oh yeah, this is. I have like an assembly thing set up. Okay. And okay. then I cook it in a. I fry it up in a in a cast iron pan. Of course. Yes. You, yeah. You have, you have to. You have to. Uh, have you ever seen an induction stove? I have seen them. Mm -hmm. I have not used one. So when we moved into the house, you know, we go to cook. We're hungry. Put the pot on. Nothing happens. That's oh no. Weird. Go put the pot on, nothing happens. New burner, we're like everything all over the stove. Oh no. One day, I think one of the kids uh, pulls out the, and the cast iron pan works. All of a sudden, <laughs> it works. And then Rachel's like, gets on Google's like, why does my stove only work with cast iron? And then found out that we had an induction stove and the people That's that of the house just never, never thought to pass on you can only have like pans with a magnetic uh, bottom yeah. to it's like a safety thing i feel like that's a really important detail uh, yes that the oven <laughs> only works if you have Forget a yet to tell you all right yeah. so well, i'm glad you finally figured it out and did not get a brand new stove yeah, well, yeah. what the heck well it turns out a, a, the stove itself is like three grand did you sell it what like, Get a different yeah, one. Did you sell it? I would I would have sold it. Well, we have five kids, so it's it's actually a really good safety feature sure. that a kid can't put that like a hand won't the burner will literally not turn on. As soon as you remove the pan with the magnetic bottom, that it cuts off the burner. Is it still hot? The burner's still hot? It goes cold like yeah. what? Mm -hmm. What? Exactly. Science. Yes, yes, that's exactly it's fine. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, yeah, that's good for the kiddos. Right. Might be good for the cats, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make that fried chicken. Now, do you ever go Do you ever go Chick-fil-A and then put that on a bun, put some mayonnaise on the bun? No? You don't? No, I just eat, I mean, I just eat the chicken sandwich. I mean, Chick-fil-A is bomb. I love Chick-fil-A. Okay, so do you, do you butter the inside of your, your bread? I don't, I don't, I don't do the bread. I just eat the fried chicken by itself. It needs no garnishments. Okay. All right, Morgan, what's your, what's your favorite sauce. thing? I love soup. Oh, really? I love soup. <laughs> Alan really needs to come over. Yeah. I love soup and pasta, but mostly soup. Mm -hmm. So is it, Alan, what's the best? There's tons of good pasta soups, right? Like, um, yes. Chicken noodle? Chicken noodle. Does is that count? Yeah. So that's yeah. The, the better. beautiful pairing is pasta and I mean, soup. And yes. I Italian wedding soup is one of my favorites. Ooh. Okay. Mm. So okay. good. Noodle soups. Yeah, no, noodle soups is a, is a oh man, there's Morgan, there's so many places I have to I have to drag you to. You gotta have curry good. udon sometime. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds really good. Adventure. Okay. And that's but there's aren't there other sorts of pastas though? I feel like there are soups where what's the what's the kind of pasta that has a whole it's like a cylinder and it has a whole through it. Penne? Penne? Hey, are, are you talking about the larger ones or the smaller ones? Like cause that because there's, there's Oh yeah. Okay. Are we talking like yes. uh, the ones that are like cut like that? Okay. There's a lot oh, of penne. 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 It is a, penne, okay. That's okay. Penne. Aren't there great penne soup? I bet there are. Probably. I need to look them up. Penne soup? And then I make mean, Brandon make it. 
See, there's a. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can. I mean, I'll Penny's have my the shape of the. Take all the soup for me. Okay. So, gonna... so the so Penny's just the shape of the pasta, right? Like the the, the whole like the naming of the pasta is just like what shape it takes, right? El like macaroni means elbow, for example. Right. Penne, like it, it's tubular, right? Sure. Like I mean, yeah, you could make a penne chicken soup if you want. I mean, but still. I, I feel like long noodle soups are. It feels like a cop out. It feels like. What? Doesn't it? No. Oh. Yeah, you like, 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 <laughs> like so it's um it's uh long noodles are often associated with spaghetti yeah but if you wanted to you could put it in soup is you, you can right i mean yeah. i mean I, I i think i know what you mean which is like like the noodles have to be coated in something that's like thicker like a sauce right like so that's the thing that like makes spaghetti for example really good but right. in a soup it, yeah i mean like cuz it's so liquidy it wouldn't it wouldn't adhere to the noodles anyway well, i know that's why you put it in the you get you get your spoon and you put you build each little bite with a little noodle and a little chicken and a little onion no i'm i'm just saying i understand what he I means i take forever but... to eat ramen because i have to assemble each and every bite that i take oh my gosh yes <laughs> i have you have to make sure that the noodles soak up the broth yes. Yes. Okay. So that good rice noodles will do that as well. I mean, like, yeah. But there's a risk if you doesn't if you leave ramen in the broth overnight, doesn't it ruin it? Why would you leave it overnight? No, it just kind of soaks it up a little bit more. I would I, never leave it in there overnight because then oh, I would soggy. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't like the soggy noodle. Either. I feel like but, there's a balance. Yes, yes, but I feel like the the shorter, like the different shapes of pasta. For whatever reason, penne. I'm okay eating a penne soup the next day. Like it holds, it holds its shape. Yeah, that's it holds, Whereas I feel like the noodles don't. Like it's going to mush, man. You just, you just store it separately. separately. Right. I mean, yeah. like, so penne is good because like it, it, it. There's so much surface area that like holds it together, right? Whereas like the noodle, like it'll, it, it'll just like mush up. It depends on the noodle. Oh, it but, depends on the type of noodle. I think. But but you wouldn't have that overnight. You 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 would make fresh pasta and like put that in the put that in the soup and then that's what you'd eat for that Is, night. Isn't it hard though to figure out how much to make? Oh yeah, it's it's never. Yeah. I can never figure it out. I'm just always going to have a ton of pasta made, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna deal with I that. I mean tennis ball amount is like one like so. You if you make a fist like okay. that's that's one. Oh. that's one serving of noodles. Yo, okay. Everyone's looking at That's their very big. <laughs> That's a lot of noodles. That is a Wait, lot. Wait, are we talking like spaghetti? I guess that is. Yeah, a lot. yeah, yeah. Like, like if you have a ball of noodles, like a tennis ball, or like the the size of your fist. That's that's like your portion. That's your that's your portion size. Okay, so when you, are we talking? Okay, because I'm I'm on. I the think we're cooked, talking not... like like macaroni. You said cooked. Oh, oh, uh, no, no, no. You're, you're talking about spaghetti. holding the raw noodles, right? No, 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 no. I mean, like cooked noodles, like like the amount of a of a of a tennis ball is that's okay. like a serving size. But how do you? Noodles? Oh, we're talking like uncooked to cook. No, cook. Like, how do you measure out? Yes. Oh, oh, to do that. Uh, yes. I mean, like so. So if it's like a, okay, we'll we'll have this conversation right now <laughs> <laughs> during our during our panel for Yasha. Uh No. So you want what you want to do is uh, if you if you go like this, like that'll uh, like if you. Get the pasta and you do maybe your ring finger, I think, or no, your middle finger. Um, that's how much pasta you should be holding raw in there. And that's that a lot of it pasta. Hard. It is for one person. Uh, people like seconds. I don't know. I mean, you can do your index. I mean, that's it, but that's up to you, right? It's like how much do you want to feed people? Okay, okay, okay. Right. So, like, however big this is, that's how much pasta you get, and then you'll get like a, a tennis ball worth of pasta. So then, do you okay. keep your noodles separate from your from your broth and only add? Yes. Yes. Like if I'm making a specifically a pasta dish, I'll have noodles separate, and then I'll add noodles. Like I'll make noodles and then put the pasta sauce in, and then add yeah. like a little pasta water, and then butter at the end to like make it glossy and um, round it out. But yeah, no, I mean that's what I'll do. But if I'm making a pasta soup, for example, like I'll. I'll put the pasta in at the last like five, seven minutes. Okay. And then like, and then so, you know, so that it gets to know each other, right? Like the soup and the pasta. <laughs> they get acquainted. Yeah, okay. exactly. I'm putting this penne chicken soup uh, link in chat for you, Morgan, so that you can make. Uh... <laughs> right, but if you want to like portion control, I mean like the best thing to do is wait, right? So you can right? have Brandon make it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's he's in the different. kitchen and I'm not, so I'll just let him handle it. <laughs> okay. Forever associated with this panel, you'll be able to find it, and then you just go to the link and then find the comment, and then you can. All right, Brandon. This is your. Uh, this is what you have to make. <laughs> this is your homework. Yep. I'm going to. Brandon's gonna be like, "What did you get me into?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, apparently he the, the food service that shows up. How how often does it show up? Um, Kira, how often does the, is it a new dish every day or did they give you the whole week at a time? How does that work? You choose, so it arrives once a week, but you can choose how many boxes you want for that week. So I usually get like three, cause you know, on the days that my favorite food truck comes to town, I'm gonna go and get something from them. <laughs> and then, you know, the rest of the time I will have like food to make at home. So what's your, um, what is your favorite food truck? It is um, called Kimbrel Brex, and it's a sushi burrito truck. <laughs> yes, that's oh, it awesome. changed. Yeah. Wait, wait, your 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 sushi burrito your sushi burrito truck changed. Jokasaki went on a business. I'm really Did sad. Did they really? Yeah, oh. right when the pandemic started, they were just no. gone. So. Oh no. Oh, no. That's sad. Rip. Rip. I'm so sorry. Rip, man. I was gonna take the call there. I'm so bummed about that. Wait, what's the new place? F in the chat for Jokasaki. Right. Huh? Seriously. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What's the, what is it called? I gotta write this down. This is Kim Bob time. Rex. They have an Instagram. Oh, Kim Bob Rex. Oh, I, okay. Yeah. I know Kim Bob Rex. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. You said, oh, dude, who likes like, kimchi? I do. Kimchi. Yeah. I'm yeah. Korean, so I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you one have to. Sure, Jamie and Jackie will eat it if if it's available. Man, I I really like I'm on the I like spicy stuff, but I don't all want it to be like hot sauce spicy. I like that right. kimchi has like a very different flavor. Right. Okay, and you the said the kind I had in Korea was spicy. amazing. Here it's like hit or miss. I found. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, my mom has made kimchi so well that it ruins me for Korean restaurants. Like, oh. <laughs> Um, but I mean, that being said, like, yeah, no, I mean, I can enjoy like a, a, a dirty kimchi once in a while that like, is like a quick pickle. Yeah. A dirty kimchi. Yeah. yeah. Where like, like a restaurant style where they make so much of it that like, it's, it doesn't even taste like, like properly fermented kimchi. It's just like, it's just like, okay, this is a pickle and it like resembles kimchi. So I, I, Alan will take like a regular salad and I will add kimchi to, to my salad. Oh, that's great. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good I, idea. Yeah, I really, um, and I'm a big grain bowl guy. So I love um, mixing my my grain with like quinoa and greens for my base. And then I'll put usually like a hot cooked vegetables on it. This is it, right, Kira? This is the- Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can I, see how good those look. Okay. That does look really nice. good. Yeah. All right, so I will- I've never had a sushi burrito. They look delicious. I'm so going to change that for you, Jackie. <laughs> We're gonna... Deal. We'll, we'll talk. Do it. Yeah. Okay, everyone. But uh, if, Brad, have you tried fried kimchi? Like what? kimchi, like kimchi fried what? rice. Oh, oh, so good. Okay, that's happening. I my next <laughs> thing of kimchi because we make a ton of fried rice over here. Um, yeah, it's just one of the things that my 15 year old ended up liking. Uh, mm -hmm. And we we convinced them that it was better with vegetables in it because you know we're trying to we're always trying to kids to eat vegetables. So you just throw it right in there with the with the fried rice when you're making it. Oh, I, I fr yeah, I, I I I fry up the kimchi and then and then you know like yeah, and then I'll put that separate and then I'll put it back in as I'm making fried rice. Okay, so it's double fried then for the kimchi. Yeah, I mean you can. I mean it depends on the kimchi, right? If it's like an older, riper kimchi, you don't have to do as much. Okay. But like if it's like a good, firm, like like peak kimchi, like I, I can double fry it sometimes. I mean. Okay. Um, but you know, do what do what you want, right? I mean, recipes yeah. are just guidelines. I kimchi like, grilled cheese is a thing too. Ooh, that's great. Yeah, what? kimchi grilled cheese. Okay, you do anything to it, um, Kira, or do you just like put it in there with the cheese and grill it? Like, well, it I haven't made my own, but I had it at like a food truck once, and I remember it was really good. So would I would I put it in cold? Like would I put cold cheese and cold kimchi and then grill it, or would I? fry the kimchi, put it in there, and then grill the bread? I'm actually not sure. <laughs> I mean, the one that I had was good. I don't know what they did to it specifically. Okay. Well, it sounds like we have a lot to experiment this week. Uh, <laughs> Becky, thank you for fried chicken. My family will be eating fried chicken. Yes. 
if I can get to it tonight, I'm going to get all the ingredients and that's what I'll be tomorrow. Um, always a pleasure, you guys. It is so great to get to know everybody. Um, I, I love Yashihime. It was something that I watched four episodes and was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this panel? And then I kept hitting play and then magic happened. Like you all, like it's the performance, the performance value of what each of you brings to that anime it's really spectacular um you know you can't the story is the story and you have to tell the story that they wrote but you you all did such an amazing job that i'm actually really excited and i will be i i got to episode 12 and i will be anxiously awaiting your dub of the rest of the season so i can keep watching i love it so thank you very much yeah thank, thank you, you. All right, uh, we're gonna take a break now. Uh, on the other side of the wall, like I said, you can hang out with any of our guests. Um, go go hit up their pages. Uh, make sure that you're there for the VIP and we'll take a 30 minute break and see everybody in VIP for your questions. Thank you guys so much for joining us. <laughs>